If you don't know already, temperature plays a huge part when it comes to printing resin miniatures. And here's the problem for many of you out there. As Eddard Stark rightly told us, winter is coming. And with that comes colder temperatures. And for those of you who 3D print in your sheds or garages, you're probably finding one of two problems. One is that you can't get anything to print. Your previously dialed in settings just don't work and you end up printing half models especially those in a garage where it's warm enough during the day, but temperatures drop sharply overnight. And two is when it does print, your models look bloated and have poor details because you've got no choice but to overexpose them. Which is why I wanted to do a video dedicated to resin printing in some colder temperatures and talk about some solutions for you. So hi, I'm Ross and this is Fohammer Videos. Now, I'll get into the more DIY solution shortly, but first let's talk about printers with integrated heaters. There are three types I've seen so far, and I'll talk about them in order of efficiency. The first is an integrated chamber heater. You can see this on the likes of the 14K Nova 3D Whale 3 Ultra. These will heat the air in the chamber and the model itself. The last thing to get heat is actually the resin in the tank, and specifically the resin at the bottom of the tank, where it needs to be the warmest because, well, that's the bit that gets cured first. They're better than nothing, but they can heat your printed model more than the resin vat, and I worry that it will lead to warping and stretching. The next version, which I've seen on the GK2, is the heat chamber below the screen, keeping your chamber cooler and ensuring the resin is heated from the point where it's gonna be cured first. Uniformation originally designed the GK2 to have a chamber heater, but the production models now heat from below the vat. And the final way, which I've seen only on the Apex Maker X1, is having a heating element directly inside the vat. Beyond that, there are the DIY options, such as using a hydroponics grow tent and sticking a heater inside it. Just be aware that as soon as you open this, the air will cool, and when you're installing one, make sure you know what you're doing in order to prevent any risk of fire. There are chamber heaters you can get on Amazon, but you only need to look at the Amazon reviews to trust how useful they are. Though in saying that, I've just seen one by Chitu Systems that I didn't know about, and it kind of looks promising. I'll put links in the description, but that actually may be a good future video. But in this video, I specifically want to show off what the GK2 is capable of. I'd say by now you've all seen the video by Uniformation printing in the snow, but as I look at that video on YouTube, it's had only 50 or so views in the last four months. Yet this is one of the most impressive feats of this printer. So when I woke up on Idle Sunday to find it had snowed here in Nottingham, I decided there was nothing better to do. Forget playing with the kids, going sledging or building a snowman. I decided the best thing to do was to test my GK2 in the snow. And to be clear, this is the GK2 that I modified to have the 12K screen. As I was saying, I popped this out in the freezing cold and started printing. I've been in the process of printing 70 of these only miniatures for Marco Frizzoni recently. Hopefully you know Marco, but if not, I hope you check his stuff out. He's one of the world's best miniature painters and well, he's an all round great guy. He's going to be using these models with the permission of the creator, Denny Coy, to use in his upcoming painting classes for the next year. I'll put a link in the description for Denny's models if you want to print them, but he's got many more than this and I hope you'll check them all out. And I'll also put a link to Marco's various profiles in case you're eager to get some live tuition from a world leading painter. Trust me, he's that good, I'm going to be attending one of his classes in the future for sure. Coming back to using the GK2 outside, I did need to cheat a little. Instead of having the resin temperature set at 35 degrees, I decided to give the unit a bit less work to do by dropping it to 25. But the new firmware wouldn't let me start the print until the printer's temperature was reached. So I actually took the printer back inside just to let the unit heat up and pass this threshold and that would get the printer started. But as soon as the bed plate started to move, it was straight back outside and off to printing it went. And since the snow in the UK doesn't last long, I couldn't risk a print failure. So I also went into the slicer and upped the exposure a bit. Yes, this would overexpose the model slightly, but a less detailed print is still better than no print at all. 
And to protect the printer a little more, I also put my rainproof jacket over it, mainly to prevent any melting snow from dripping down and into the back of the electronics. But that was it. I left it to do its thing for the next eight hours. As for me in this time, well, I went out to play with the kids, sledging and building snowmen. I did check on the printer later that evening, and it actually managed to keep up to around 15 degrees, despite the outside temperature being closer to 3 degrees all day long. But it was when I came back to the finished print an hour or so later, that it had actually dropped to 9 degrees quite rapidly, because the printer had finished and the heater had turned off. It's probably worth noting that when playing with any resin 3D printer outside, even though it was overcast, as soon as you open the cover, the resin in the vat will start to cure because, you know, sunlight, UV. And because of this, I did have some stringy artifacts around the build plate when I opened it up. So my advice here is don't do this. In fact, don't do any of this. Don't go and put your printer outside in the snow just to prove a point. I'll risk damaging my expensive printers so you don't have to. That's got to be worth a like at the very least. But anyway, you want to know about the prints themselves. Well, they worked. Yeah, they're a little overexposed as expected because of the longer curing time, but this is still a smooth and viable print, which is certainly usable in the likes of Marco's painting classes. And if you're still out there on the fence needing more proof that the GK2 is an absolute beast of a printer, well, here it is. But for any printer, temperatures above 20 degrees are generally ideal, but this can vary depending on your particular resin type. The GK2 can go up to 35, which is where I tend to leave it because, well, the first time I tested it, it was perfect and I've never felt the need to change it. There are certainly many DIY options out there, and I'll leave these down to you, but please be careful and make sure you understand what you're doing before you delve into any approach. Now look, I'm not trying to scare anyone, I just don't know enough about electronics to advise what's safe and what isn't. It's also the main reason I haven't gone down any of the DIY routes myself. But if you do have a resin printer and you want the best results, definitely get it warm and keep it warm. The bigger issues come from inconsistent temperature rather than just low temperature. You can still print at low temperature. You could dial in your best printer settings, and if you're unsure how to do this, please check out my how to print video, but you could dial this in when it's warm during the day and have perfect prints. But as soon as the temperature drops overnight, you'll find that things start to fail from small layer tears and warpage to complete failures. Eaters really should become a standard in all the next generation of resin printers, or I'm going to want to ignore them. But until then, do the best you can, or buy a printer that already has this feature available. And when you do, remember what I said about the different approaches at the beginning of this video. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to our channel members who fund us creating these videos. If you want to get your name up in the credits, please consider joining them using the links below this video. Though I have only just learned this week that this isn't actually available in the iPhone app, so please check out the channel on the web in order to sign up. You'll get early access, exclusive videos and priority comment replies along with your name up in lights. But as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, no, you know what? You know how it works, just do the things. Until next time, do you want to build a snowman? Fohammer out.